On yesterday's program, Pastor Benny Hinn began a message at Morris Cirillo's mission to London on the eternal significance of the cross of Jesus. The throne of the universe is the cross of Jesus Christ. For the cross of Jesus is the seat of all authority. The cross of Jesus is the seat of all power. The cross of Jesus is the seat of victory. Jesus said in Matthew, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? If any man will come after me, if any man will follow me, let him deny himself. The denial of self is the message that God is burning in my heart. The denial of self is the cry of the Spirit to the church. Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. The cross is the symbol of death. The only people with genuine authority over Satan, the devil, the only people with genuine power over the demons of hell are those who have chosen the cross are those who are allowing the cross to deliver them from self. Today, you'll hear more of this most important message, which every Christian must take to heart if they are to live a life which will be both pleasing to God and an effective witness for the gospel. The entire teaching is available on CD for a gift of $20 to the ministry. So if you'd like your own copy of Pastor Benny's message at the 2006 Mission to London Crusade, please write, call, or order online today. Now let's join the audience at the Earl's Court Arena as Pastor Benny continues this life-changing message. Paul the Apostle made one of the most remarkable, one of the most amazing statements in all the Bible about this when he said, Listen to this, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. And then he said this, he that is dead is free from sin. He that is dead is free from sin. How would you like to be free from sin, choir? How would you like to be free from sin, people of God? On the cross, you will be free. When you are on that cross, no sin can touch you. It is on that cross that the promise is fulfilled when Paul the Apostle wrote in verse 14 of Romans 6, Sin shall not have dominion over you. Are you struggling with some old sin? Are you still battling that old lust that you used to battle before salvation? Are you still being tempted with the same sin you've been tempted with for 20 years? Are you still fighting the same demons? Get to that cross, my brother. Get to that cross, my sister, as fast as you can. Because on that cross, no demon will touch you. 
On that cross, no sin will have you. On that cross, no bondage will exist in your life. When you are on that cross, you are free. Because a dead man is free from sin. Only the living are bound. Only the living are bound. Only the living are oppressed. Only the living struggle with Satan. The dead man is free from sin. I pray every one of us will come to that place in our walk with God when we will die and be free from a power of sin and no longer have to battle the old demons we've battled for so many years. Lift your hands and ask him for that liberty, my brother. Lift your hands and ask him for that liberty, my sister. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. Paul the Apostle wrote, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? It's the cross. Denial of self. Denial of our desires. Our longings. Our plans. Our wishes, everything must die. I believe we are coming into a time in the spirit where God will pour out such power on the church. But he will pour out only upon those who are dead. The life of God for remember resurrection awaits the dead. Resurrection is next to crucifixion. Paul the Apostle said, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness. Yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. we be dead with Christ we shall also live with him knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more death hath no more dominion over him and it is with us he that is dead is free from sin from bondage from oppression he who is dead can claim the promise, sin shall not have dominion over me. We all know Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, not I, Christ lives in me. The life I live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. The people of God, the most important thing I can give you this moment is this. You make that commitment. A cry will arise in hell against you. Satan will offer you what he offered Jesus. The flesh will reject that commitment you've made in your heart. For the flesh hates the cross. The flesh will fight you. Demons will harass you. Satan will oppose you. That is the reason why the psalmist wrote in Psalm 118 verse 27. Bind the sacrifice on the altar. That's why Paul the apostle wrote. I put my body on the subjection. Give it no choice. Give it no authority. Bind to that self on the cross. You die. 
at the moment of salvation, the process begins. You begin to climb your own mountain of Calvary. And along the way, self loses hold. In the process of death, self loses its grip on your life. You begin to feel the liberty of the Spirit. You know what a real Christian is? A real Christian is mentioned in Galatians chapter 5 where Paul the Apostle mentions the, the most remarkable verse in Galatians and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts and then he says and if we live in the spirit let us walk in the spirit it is impossible it is impossible to live in the spirit if your flesh is alive you can only live in the spirit if you have crucified the flesh and they that are Christ Galatians 5 24 they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts and now he talks about if we live in the spirit let us walk in the spirit my friend you cannot live in the spirit nor walk in the spirit till the flesh is crucified There's a question people ask. Is the infilling of the Holy Spirit the result of faith or death? Faith cannot live in a living man. Faith only lives in the dead. When the flesh begins to die, faith comes alive. Holy Ghost faith comes alive. I think this may answer the question why people who seem to have all the faith in the world receive nothing from God. Because that faith is produced by the flesh and the flesh cannot produce living faith. It only pro produce, produces dead faith. I believe, I believe, I believe. I, I really believe. So does the devil. My friend... If that faith is only in your head, it's because you're dead to the things of the Spirit. If that faith is only in your head, it's because you're alive. When it comes to the flesh, the flesh is alive. The flesh is not crucified. Self is still king. And the man says, I believe. But he, he doesn't realize that that faith that he believes is of God is nothing more than flesh. But the moment that man is dead, the moment self surrenders, the moment the old man is gone, the moment that man is on the cross, living faith is born. Real faith comes alive that doesn't have to convince itself that it believes. You don't have to say, I believe, I believe, I believe. Convincing yourself you believe. Only the flesh convinces itself. The spirit does not have to convince anybody. The spirit knows it is done. You gotta die. You gotta surrender. You wanna, yeah, yeah, you just gotta make that decision. The Christian life is a participation in Christ's death. The real Christian life is an ever increasing participation in the death of Christ if you really want to know what the Christian life is I just gave it to you the Christian life is an ever increasing participation in the death of Christ Paul in Philippians 2 talked about the death of Christ reaching that place where he would die completely the old song that says some of self, some of the 
less of self, more of thee, none of self and all of thee. When you and I reach that place, then and only then can we claim the promise of Romans 8. More than conquerors. Can I read this to you? Now we all know verse 35 and we all know verse 37. Verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, sword? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Verse 37, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. But how about verse 36, the heart of the message? Yea, we are killed all the day long. For thy sake we are killed all the day long. Brother, we all know verse 35. Who shall separate me from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations, famine, persecution, pestilence, sword, nakedness. We all know verse 37. And all these things are more than a conqueror. But my brother, the heart of triumph is verse 36. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. My brother, you want to be a conqueror? Die. Only the dead conquer. Only the dead are triumphant in Christ Jesus. When you die, he lives. Now some precious believers will sometimes come off that cross and when they come off that cross they don't realize that devil is waiting down the hill to overpower them, to defeat them and they'll remain defeated until they get back on that cross. If you come off that cross, Satan will defeat you. If you come off that cross, you'll be powerless against him. You'll continue to be defeated until you go back on that cross. And when you go back on that cross, only then can you understand what I have been preaching. Victory. Deliverance, absolute liberty is waiting for you on that cross. It begins with a decision. It begins with a simple decision, a determined decision. Yeah. Some of us are on and off, on and off. We go from victory to defeat. The Holy Ghost is saying to you and I, get back on that cross and let me do the work. All God is asking of you is one thing. Matthew 16, 24, if any man will come after me, just pick up that cross. And follow me. The cross is the throne of the universe, like you heard today. When we come to that cross, self will die, self will be canceled, and Jesus will live. Victory and power will be ours then because of the cross. Make sure to get this whole message from London. When I shared this message, the power of God was mighty, and I know it was mighty today. And remember, He loves you. Dear Jesus, let's pray. Dear Jesus, touch that when I pray today. For the power of the Holy Ghost will rest upon that life. Bring healing, bring deliverance, bring strength today, Lord, for your name's sake. Deliver that one from oppression, from bondage, 
from sickness and pain. In the name of Jesus, heal and set that one free. I give you praise. If you do not know the Lord, the greatest miracle is salvation. Pray this after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. And I believe you came to earth. And I believe you died for me on a cross. And I believe you shed your blood for me. Forgive my sin, precious Lord. For I believe you rose from the dead. Come into my heart. Save my soul. I surrender my life to you right now. Amen and amen.